Okay, so today we're going to take a look at hypothesis testing for a single or one proportion, and it's a population proportion. So here's a bit of an overview. So the method is the same as for the means, where we have our purpose, we're performing a hypothesis test, we have some assumptions that we have to take a look at, and remember independent and simple random samples always hold, and then we have our number our large enough number and our success and failure. So remember we had NP and NQ both greater than or equal to in case of confidence intervals it was 10 but here we have 5. Now just to recall for this particular slide this is from our textbook the P naught here and here and everywhere else on the slide that's just referring to P our population proportion parameter so just don't get too confused with that. When we do our solving of problems we'll just use the P to make it simpler. We then have our null hypothesis, and remember the null always has the population parameter in it. The P0 is what is currently accepted value at right now, and the alternative hypothesis will be the one of three tests, the not equal to test, two tail, the less than test, or left tail, and the greater than test, right tail. And again, please notice that each of the tests will have the population parameter in it and the currently accepted value as does the null hypothesis. We then have our given or decided upon level of significance and the computing the value then of our test statistic and putting it in terms that we're going to be looking at to make it maybe a little simpler for us. The z they're referring to here is a z calculated equals to the point of interest our sample population proportion minus our center our population proportion that's currently accepted right now divided by the spread given by from the binomial model root pq over n and please note that the p that's here the population proportion is the same p that's down here the population proportion so just don't forget that we have our two methods our critical value approach and our p-value approach so the critical value approach remember we're calculating we're trying to figure out what our critical test statistic is going to be based on our alpha level and just again to remind you a couple of different terminologies or notation z critical z star or z alpha or if you have a two-tailed test alpha over two so remember the z critical is based on your chosen or given alpha value once we have that we can set up our different types of tests and show the reject and don't reject regions and then when we do calculate our z calculated we determine where is it where it is is it in the do not reject region or maybe in the reject regions and as the step five here shows if the value of the statistic falls in the reject region you reject h naught otherwise you do not reject it in the case of the p-value approach, the p-value is the little area under the curve, either to the right, if we have a left, sorry, to the left, if we have a left tail test, or to the right, if we have a right tail test, or the combination of the two tails, if we have a two tail test, that is represented by, remember, z naught is our z calculated. So this refers to the area under the curve as it corresponds to the z calculated. We then compare that p-value to our alpha value, and if it's less than or equal to, we reject our h naught. Otherwise, we don't reject it. And then we interpret out the results of our hypothesis tests. So let's just review a couple of scenarios. We're not going to solve them completely. We'll do some separate examples in um, some subsequent videos. So we have here an example of a director of a municipal, municipal transit authority. He's claiming that 35% of the system's ridership consists of senior citizens. They did a recent study and they found only 23% of riders are senior citizens. So like we did for means, how do we know that this is a hypothesis test question? Well, we have a claim. Okay, and we have a claim that somebody thinks that something's happening. And then we have a study showing maybe something else is happening. What's our random variable? Well, we have two percentages here, so we have proportions. So now let's sort out what we would do. So our null and alternative hypotheses, we're dealing with proportions. So there's our population parameter, population proportion. There's our equal to, and then we have three, five. 
So here, why is it the 35% showing up as the currently accepted value? Well, that's because this is the director of a municipal transit authority. So it's like that big brother perspective. This is what is generally accepted right now. So they're saying that that's what it's equal to. Okay, so 35% ridership consists of senior citizens. But he's thinking that actually that, well, I did a study and I only got 23%. So it's looking like this value is less than 35%. So he's thinking, well, it's actually not 35% senior citizens. It's actually less than 35. So notice again, same population parameter symbol, same population parameter value. But then here's the accepted value currently. And here's what they think is happening. Setting up the regions, since this is a less than test, we have our little reject region in the tail to the left, and we have our fail to reject region, the bigger area to the right. Our current population proportion is 35%, so there's our center. And this value here would be our Z star or our Z critical. And remember, that's based on the chosen level of significance, or sometimes somebody might put it in terms of confidence level. And then this area, this little red area, that's our reject H naught region, that's our alpha value. So walking through some of the methodology, we need to calculate the test statistic or Z calculated for our sample proportion of 23%. So here we have a recent study, that's our sample proportion values. And then we'd have to compare that Z calculated to our Z critical and determine are we in the reject region or the fail to reject region. And here we have one, maybe the result we have shows that we're in the fail to reject region so we can make a decision. Or maybe it's over here in the reject region and now again we can make a decision and conclusion. Our, our our alternative method is the p-value method. We could take this Z calculated, look up the area to the left of that test statistic. Why the area to the left? Because the, we have a less than tail, less than test, excuse me, and we can determine the p-value or the probability of that Z calculated, in other words, that sample proportion actually occurring. And what happens is, excuse me, <clears throat> if that probability value is small enough, then we'll reject the null hypothesis. So here I have it showing, and I haven't done any calculations, just as, this is just for concepts, that my Z calculated is over here, meaning that my p-value would be the tiny area, oops, back up, would be the tiny area to the left of that, meaning that, well, that's a very, very small probability of this test statistic this test statistic, this sample statistic actually happening, but it did happen, so that's telling us something. What's it telling us? We should reject H naught. Let's take a look at another type of test here. We have Jackson Backus. He received a truckload of canned beets from his grocery supplier, and the supplier claimed that no more than 20% of the cans are dented. And uh, days gone by, if you have a dented tin, it typically indicated that the product inside, there was some problem with it, it, it was damaged. Mr. Backus examined a random sample, and he found 25 of the cans he received were dentist. And this is my favorite sentence in the whole course, has Mr. Backus bought a batch of botched beach? Try saying that fast a couple of times, guys. <laughs> All right, let's walk through the process again. So again, we're looking at hypothesis test Y. Now we don't specifically have a lot of terminology here, but we have a grocery supplier who's claiming that this is what is the currently accepted value, 20%. So our null hypothesis is that the population proportion of dented cans is 20%. Now, Mr. Backus, he did his own little study, the random sample, and he found 259 of the cans were dented. Okay, sorry, I can't see that because my, there is 25%, sorry, 25% of the cans were dented. Has Mr. Backus bought the batch of botched peach? So he thinks that, well, his number was 25%, and that's more than 20%. So he's thinking that it's actually greater than the generally accepted 20%. So we can see here we have a one tail greater than test. So again, looking over the diagram, here's our reject region, our alpha, the area to the right, 
and are failed to reject the green to the left. In this case, the center of the population proportion that's currently accepted is 20%. Here's our Z star or Z critical, again, based, our chosen on, based on our chosen alpha level of significance or confidence level. And this area here, currently shown in red, is our alpha value. So just like before, for this sample information, we need to figure out <clears throat> our test statistic or as it calculated for that sample proportion of 25%. If it's over here, the test statistic, the Z calculated, then we would fail to reject H naught. If it's over here in the reject region, well then we reject H naught. We can also take a look at the value of the p-value and remember for a greater than right tail test, the p-value is the area to the right the test statistic. So if our Z calculated is here, what's our p-value going to be? It'll be that little area just to the right of wherever our value is. And just like before, if that area is small enough, then we're going to reject H naught. So that's how we'd set up a greater than test. Let's take a look at a two-tail test. So Stats Canada issued a report in 2001 stated that 28.7% of teenagers in Canada smoke. The Ontario Medical Association believed that the statistic had changed and in a study of 500 teenagers in 2005, it found 20.1% smoked. So this one's a little trickier because you know we do have the big brother, Stats Canada. We have a generally accepted value, 28.7% of teenagers in Canada smoke. And we have a study of 500 teenagers that found 20.1% smoked. So now this value looks smaller than the 28.7, but look what it says here. The Ontario Medical Association believed that the statistic had changed. So this is gonna make us understand that we don't have a less than or greater than test, or less than is what we maybe would think here. We actually have an equals and not equals test. Now, realistically, um, we'd really be more concerned if it was higher. We wouldn't really be concerned if it was lower, but we're gonna take the scenario here that because the person, the medical association believed the statistic had changed, we're gonna test, well, this was what it was before, the proportion of teenagers in Canada who smoke, population parameter, currently 28.7%. And now to indicate a change, and remember a change can be higher or lower, we have that the proportion is not equal to the 28.7%. Let's take a look at the diagram for this type of test. So notice because it's a not equal to test, we have two reject regions. Setting it up again, our population parameter is 28.7. And because we have a two-tail test, we have two test statistics or two Z criticals. And because of this, remember just like for confidence intervals, instead of having alpha in a tail, we now have alpha over two. Alpha is the total in these two tails. Same as before though, now we'd go on to our calculation phase. We'd have to calculate our test statistic, or Z calculated, for our sample proportion of 20.1%. This is the sample here for our study, and see what region it's in. If our calculated Z statistic is in this region, we're in the fail to reject. Maybe it's down here in the lower value, and then we'd reject H naught. Or maybe it's actually up there in the higher value, in the higher area, so it's a high positive value, but also a reject region. So note it could be in the low side or it could be on the high side. We then have to be able to figure out the p-value of that Z calculated. And let's just work with this one here where the Z calculated is in the high side and it's in the reject region. Remember our p-value, if we had a single greater than test, would be the area to the right of this. But in a two-tail test, a not equal to test, we have to look up the area of the total in both tails. So we would look up from our tables, the area to the left, calculate the area to the right, and then we'd have to multiply it by two, and we'll see that in further examples.
And then again, if that p-value is small enough, we would reject h naught. So this is just an overview for proportions for hypothesis testing of one proportion and the three different types of tests. And take a look at some of the subsequent videos for different specific examples. Thanks.